Hey there, welcome to this tutorial. We are going to build the following feature using Jetpack Compose. So I have this button, send message, and when I click on it, a message is animated on the screen and then animated out of the screen. But that's not very challenging. The interesting feature here is that if I click on this button multiple times, then we will see that these messages are buffered internally and are shown one after another. And for use case for something like that is, for example, if you integrate with the backend and backend send, uh, sends push notifications to your device, and it's important for you to make sure that the user sees and has a chance to read these push notifications, then you can put something like that somewhere on the screen. And then the user will be basically, first of all, they will see all these messages and they will have a chance to read them. And of course, something like a news feed or something like that, that's the use case for this feature. Our starting point for this tutorial is the following feature. We have this uh, send message button and when we click on it, messages just appear on the screen. They do not disappear. And every time we click, this number is just incremented. So it's kind of a halfway through to our feature. And the reason we start here and not from a blank slate state is because, well, this is relatively simple code, so I don't want to spend time demonstrating it. So we have my screen template, some kind of a general template that I use, button, and if the message now is larger than zero, then we show this text, which represents this message, of course. And of course, when we click on this button, where is that, on click, we just increment this message num, and therefore uh, this composable recomposes and the text shows an updated message. And now our goal is to make all of that animatable and make sure that we buffer these messages somewhere and somehow. And of course, the first element that we are going to use is this animated visibility. And here we'll do visible equals not false, but messages num is larger than zero. So if messages num is larger than zero, then we want to just show this exact test, uh, text right here, remove that. Okay, let's see what's going on after this change. So I click on this send message, and of course the message appears in the wrong place. Why is that? Well, because I need to just copy paste uh, this part of the modifier right into my animated visibility. And I can remove it from here. So animated visibility is responsible for positioning this content and the text will just uh, be shown inside this animated visibility block. And now when I click on it, we can see that the message one appears, but then when I click on this button, uh, other messages do not appear. And therefore what I want to do now is to enhance this stuff. So first of all, for this animated visibility, we want to define uh, enter transition and that will be fade in because this is what makes sense for messages like a toast something, right? And then animation spec, spec, where are you? Animation spec will be twin. And then we need to set some duration in milliseconds. And let's just put this as a constant here because we will need it in a moment. So animation duration, and let's say that that will be 500 milliseconds. Animation duration in milliseconds. So duration, that will be animation duration in milliseconds. And similarly, we want to define exit animation, of course. So exit animation equals, but not fade in, but fade out. Basically the same stuff, animation duration, 500 milliseconds. After that, I will rebuild the application and we will notice that nothing changes <laughs> considerably. We still see this first message, Well, we don't see because this emulator is really, really slow. We should see that this first message is being animated in, okay, you see? But the next messages are not animated, they just appear. And we want to change that. So, okay, what do we do now? The problem here is that once we flip this animated visibility to visible true, we never flip it back to false. And therefore, what we would like to achieve is when this messages number changes, we flip the animated visibility to true state for some period of time, and then we flip it to false. How do we do that? Well. We will use launched effect. The key will be this messages num, of course. And when this happens, when messages num changes, what we want to do is to well define additional state. So var show message by remember, and that will be mutable state of 
false, right? So we would like to do the following, like show message equals to true, and then delay for some period of time. What's that? How delay, delay, sorry, for some period of time, let's say 100 milliseconds, and then show message equals to false. Let's see what we get from here. And of course, the condition here changes to just show message, relaunch the app. And now when I click on this send message, we see that the message appears and immediately disappears. Why is that? Well, because this delay is really short. We have this animation duration of 500 milliseconds, but I uh, hide this animated visibility after just 100 milliseconds. Not good. What we want to do is to basically at least wait for this animation duration, but actually we want to wait a little bit longer in order to let our users read this message. So let's just, you know, uh, show duration millisecond. Let's show the message, let's say for one second. So let's wait for that plus show duration. And now after the application restarts, we immediately see this message zero and then message one and then message two. And by the way, we don't want to see zero, of course, because this message num equals to zero means that we don't have any messages yet. We haven't clicked on this button. So let's just do it like that. If a message num is greater than zero, only then we want to show the message. But the problem with this code will be just, you know, if I'll click multiple times on this button, we still see this immediate increment of this message. And therefore, if your backend sends several push notifications back to back, the user will miss some of them because they will just see the latest notification. That's not good for us. We want to make sure that the user get a chance to see these notifications and therefore we're not done yet. So what we want to do is to actually make sure that these messages are shown uh, one by one and for at least some amount of time. And a launched effect, what will happen here? Well, we launch this effect and we enter this block of code. We enter this delay waiting for this period of time before we hide the message. But if during this waiting time, I click on this button and this launched effect is relaunched again because message uh, num changes, then the previous one will be canceled. That's just in the documentation of launched effect, right? Uh, what is that? The core team will be canceled and relaunched when the launched effect is recomposed with a different key. So every time this message is my message num changes, launched effect will be canceled, the previous one will be canceled, and a new one will be launched, and therefore we will not get to execute this show message false, and of course we will not wait for some duration to uh, let the user read this message. What can we do? Well, we want to decouple this code somehow from the coroutine scope associated with this launched effect, something that would live a little bit longer than the coroutine scope of this launched effect. And there is such a beast, it's called so coroutine scope equals remember coroutine scope. And the documentation for this remember coroutine scope tells us that uh, this coroutine scope is bound to this point in the composition, blah, blah, blah. Um, get will only be called once and the same coroutine scope instance will be returned across your compositions. Exactly, that's what we need. This scope will be canceled when this call leaves the composition. So basically this coroutine will be canceled only when this entire composable is no longer needed and these suites are needed. So what we want to do here, if messages num is uh, larger than zero, then we want to grab this coroutine scope and launch a new coroutine right here. And just to be on the safe side, I'm pretty sure that it will use that by default, but just like you know, dispatchers main immediate. All right, now what happens? This message num changes and launch effect is reevaluated. Re and only if message num is larger than zero, then we will launch a new coroutine. But we will launch a new coroutine every single time this messages, message num changes. And, and that's not what we want. We want to actually let this coroutine live for as long as we need and we want to ensure that there's just you know one of them out there. So that's where we enter this area of buffering. We want to buffer the messages. We don't want to cancel and relaunch scopes, coroutine scopes, uh, sorry, coroutines every time this message num changes. We want to buffer the messages and show them why one by one. And for that, we will need a queue. So messages queue equals, and let's just use very simple linked list. 
So linked list implements Q. Sorry, what's that? Not have to infer the type variable. Okay, so that will be of course Q of type int and this linked is well now it has all the information to infer this int. Okay, we have this messages Q and whenever this message name changes, what we want to do? Well, we want to go and to just add an element into this queue. And then we want to launch this coroutine, but we want to launch it only when no other coroutine is launched. How can we do that? Well, first of all, we can just grab the job, coroutine job that is returned from this launch and just check that for is active. But this is kind of complex solution. I like simple solutions. So var processing messages by remember, uh, remember why uh, auto completion just doesn't work properly by remember and that will be immutable state of false, right? So we want to do the following. If not processing messages, then and message num greater than zero. Well, basically we want to do it like right here. If message num then zero, then just, you know, return doesn't do anything and then we can get rid of this check here. So if I'm not processing messages right now, then I will flip processing, not, not that, please autocomplete, do something useful messages. I want to flip it to true and launch this coroutine. After this coroutine will complete its execution, I will just processing messages to false, right? Something along these lines. But this will not work because, okay, first time we launch this launched effect, we start this coroutine and it goes and just, you know, shows message once and that's it. But we might actually add more messages to the queue while this coroutine is executing and we will kind of miss these messages. So what we want to do is we want to, after this coroutine is started, we want to make sure that it loops through all these messages as long as the queue is not empty. So as long as the queue is not empty, please loop through these messages. And now we have this change. So the text currently just shows this string based on the current this message num. But we use this message num actually as a counter. So message counter, right? Because we increment this counter every time the button is clicked. But it's not necessarily the case that we want to show the current value of this counter. We actually want to show something that we take out of the queue from the head of the queue. And therefore, we will probably need to add another variable into here. So we have messages counter, uh, show message and processing messages. So let's just add here, you know, uh, current message num. And now when we get here while the queue is not empty, we want to do the following current message num equals, let's take something from this queue, remove the first element and then show message delay uh, flip this to false and processing messages becomes false only after we leave this while loop. And of course, here we want to change from messages counter to current message num. What do you think? Will this be enough for our feature to work as intended? Let's just test it out. So now uh, my emulator works really slow. Uh, I click on send message and when we deal with just one single message, we see that it works as expected. Now let's click several times. And now we see that <laughs> we see just one message, but the rest of the messages are not shown. Well, not good, not good. Let's understand what's going on. All right, took me a moment <laughs> to find <laughs> this bug. And the problem is of course here. So I just initialized this <laughs> link list, uh, to uh, initialize this queue to a new linked list every time we enter this composition and therefore the state is just not preserved across your compositions. So what I really want to do is to do the following, uh, remember, and then just linked list of type int. So that will be the simplest solution. And now when this linked list, my queue will be preserved across recompositions. Now, theoretically, everything should work as I expected to work and the messages should be processed one by one. So let's click several times. 
message one, great, two, three, four, five. Okay, great. But what we don't see here, we don't see the messages disappear. They just, you know, appear immediately without this fade out animation, except for the last message as we saw just now. And the problem here with that is that I don't give it a time, a chance to animate out of the screen. So I set this show message to false and immediately on the next iteration of this while loop, I set show message to true. And therefore just, you know, I don't give it a chance to animate out. But if I put a delay here of animation duration milliseconds, then theoretically, before we show the next message, the previous one should have a chance to animate out of the screen. Now click on send messages multiple times and we see message one, message two, message three, and now it works exactly as we wanted it to work. So again, we can use this feature, for example, to send push notifications from the backend and show them to the user to make sure that you know they get a chance to see these notifications on their screen in real time. All right, that's it. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any ideas about how we can improve or simplify this mechanism, I'm very eager to hear your suggestions. So leave the comments below. All right, thank you and see you next time.